Hello, and welcome back. In our introduction to integers from section 1.8, we're going to introduce absolute values. We talked about the values to the left and to the right of 0. And now we're going to talk about what this symbol is. Now, when, when I introduced uh, grouping symbols for parentheses in order of operations, I had mentioned briefly about absolute values being a grouping symbol. Well, they're a special type of grouping symbol. What they ask us to find is a distance. How far from the reference point of 0? So how far is this value a, which we'll insert at some point, how far is it from 0? It's not asking, is it to the right of 0? Is it to the left of 0? It's asking how far. One example of where we use absolute values is when we talk about distances. If you were asking someone for directions, they're going to tell you, well, you have to drive so many miles in this direction. They qualify the direction separately from the distance that you have to travel. So if someone says, well, how far is Kingsford from Escanaba? Someone might say 55 miles. They don't tell you any direction because it's an absolute value. Distance is always an absolute value. If someone said, well, you have to drive negative 55 miles, you'd say, hey, look, you're crazy. I'm going to ask someone else for directions. Because you never give distance as negatives. Well, when it comes to absolute value, the result will always be positive because we're asking for distance. So what an absolute value asks is how far from 0? Well, this example here, we have the absolute value, our symbols here, of 9. This is saying, how far is 9 from 0? Well, if we recall in the previous video, each one of these tick marks represents one unit. So this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This is where we would find 9 on the number line. And we're just saying, how far from 0? That's what this asks. How far is 9 from 0? Well, it's 9 units away on our number line. Well, what about negative 9? This asks. How far from 0 is negative 9, a distance? Well, negative 9 is also 9 units away. We don't have to specify which direction because it's a distance. It's 9 units from 0. Well, it happens to be to the left, but that's not what this asks, just how far. So let's look at some examples. In the previous video, I talked about 0 being a little bit special. It's neither positive or negative, or we can consider it both. Well, how far is 0 from 0? Well, 0 is 0 units away. It is where it is. So the absolute value of 0 is 0. We don't have to specify anything because this is neither positive or negative. 0. This is the only absolute value that isn't technically positive because we're dealing with 0, which isn't technically positive or negative. What about negative 19? How far is that from 0? Well, it's 19 units away. And we say units, whether they're miles or meters or inches, it doesn't matter just as long as it's a distance. How far is 1,000 from 0? Well, that'd be 1,000 units. And we notice these are always positive, except for that technical 0. But we don't see a negative sign in front of it, so we know that it is a distance. All right. So let's look at some examples. We have to be careful to discern what symbols we're working with. Now, if we recall, when we defined integers uh, and opposite numbers, we talked about that negative as being the opposite of another value. So here, if I read it as an opposite, I can say the negative or the opposite of negative 10. Well, what's the opposite of negative 10? Well, that'd be positive 10. One thing we can assess is two negatives, when they're adjacent like this, will give us a positive because it's saying the opposite of the opposite of 10. Kind of confusing, right? It's a little bit redundant. But if we say what's the opposite of negative 10, we know it's positive 10. Now here, this is an absolute value symbol. So we have to evaluate that first. If we evaluate negative 21, how far is that from 0? Well, it is 21 units away. Well, what's the opposite of 21 units? Negative. 21 units. This example here, we have the absolute value of negative 7. Well, how far is that from 0? It is 7 units away. There's no sign out here to change that, to ask me for the opposite. It is what it is. It's 7 units from 0. What about this one? 
This is going to be your example. You're going to try this on your own. And uh, hopefully, you feel confident with it. All right, let's move on. We're going to look at evaluating expressions that have negatives and absolute values at the same time. If we're asked to evaluate an absolute value, it's going to be similar to the previous examples. We recall that when we evaluate, it just means plug and chug, as I've used that term before. Put this value in where you see an x. So I'm going to rewrite the problem. But in place of x, I'm going to put a negative 4, negative absolute value of. And hopefully, we remember that when we put in a substitute value, it's always good to use parentheses. When I'm going to substitute something, I always use parentheses. It helps me to account for any signs or operations I may have to do. So now we look at this. And if we recall order of operations, we work inside outwards when it comes to grouping symbols. And these are grouping symbols, and these are grouping symbols. Within here, I can't do anything. It's just a negative 4. It is what it is. But out here, it's saying the opposite of negative 4. Well, I know the opposite of negative 4 is a positive 4. Now, we look at this grouping symbol. We're still working our way out of the grouping symbols. This special grouping symbol asks me the distance. How far is 4 from 0? Well, it's 4 units away. And then, of course, we bring this negative width. I want the opposite of 4 units. Well, that'd be negative 4. So there is our solution. That's how we evaluate. Uh, and we just take it one step at a time. All right, let's look at what if we have to combine the concept of inequalities, greater than or less than, and um, absolute values. What if we want to put these on a graph? Well, <clears throat> the reason why we look at these visually on a graph is because there's not just one solution. There's actually infinite solutions, because we know number lines continue on forever. So if x is greater than or equal to 3, here we have infinite solutions. As long as the value is 3 or greater, I have infinite numbers. That will make that a true statement. So let's find 3 on a number line. Let's say, well, if this is my reference point of 0, I'm going to go 3 tick marks away. There's my value 3. This says x, whatever x may be, has to be greater than or equal to 3. Well, if it's equal to 3, I would just put a dot there. But if it's greater than, it can be any value to the right of it. That's what greater than means, any value to the right on the number line. So what I can do is I can shade in any value to the right. So that encompasses this infinite value as this arrow continues on for infinity. The next statement here says y is less than 1. Well, let's find our reference point of 0. Let's Go one tick mark away. Here's the number 1. This says y is less than 1, which means it's going to be to the left. Well, what are the values that make that true? Well, <clears throat> because it's not equal to, I'm going to use an open circle. And I'm going to shade in the number line to the left, because these are the values that are less than 1. So we're able to graph that. When you move on in math, uh, you might see different notation used. Instead of a solid circle, sometimes we'll use a bracket. Instead of an open circle, sometimes we'll use a parenthesis. They mean the same thing. A solid dot includes the value. That's what that equal slash means. And we use a bracket or a solid dot. Here we use an open circle or a parenthesis. That means it doesn't include the value. It's not equal to. But in this case, it's less than, any value less than. All right, let's look at this. Here we have an absolute value and an inequality. Well, if we recall what an absolute value is, it's saying a distance. What are the numbers that have a distance greater than 4? A distance from 0 more specifically. Well, if here's 0, let's find the values that are 4 units away. One, 2, 3, 4. Here we have positive 4. But we also have, to the left of 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and negative 4. Both of these values are 4 units away. Well, what would be greater than 4 units away? Well, more than 4 units from 0 would be any value 
to the left, or excuse me, to the right of 0. And another aspect is we have to look at, well, here we have negative 4. Any value to the left of that one is more than 4 units from 0. So what has a distance greater than 4 units from 0? That's what it's asking. Distance greater than 4 from 0. Here's one where we have the absolute value is less than 4 units. So if we have absolute value, there's two possibilities. Go ahead and try this one on your own. Use your reference point of 0, the distance of 4, and figure out which values are going to be less than 4. So try that on your own, and thank you for watching.